Hey guys, welcome back to Nixie's, Nina's Network, whatever you want to call it. And I'm back here with another vlog. Now before we get to today's scheduled program, I just wanted to say, how are you guys? This weekend I went to Kyoto, which is one of the best times to go to Kyoto, which is in the fall. Let me tell you, if you're coming to Japan this um, year, next year, whenever, the best time to come is in the fall. Now there will be a lot of people, but let me tell you, the sights are worth it. The sights are worth it. I just got back. Um, I've had a long weekend, but I've had so, so much fun and I can't wait to show you guys about all the fun and all the beautiful sights, the orange leaves. I got to see this temple, by the way, this temple in real life and it was amazing. It was so amazing. So let me just say, if you want to come to Japan, I highly recommend coming to Kyoto. Kyoto has some of the nicest people, some of the nicest sights, and it is traditionally beautiful. It really feels like you're in a different world, a different planet. But um, with that being said, if you like this video today, be sure to give it a like and a subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. But let's start with today's scheduled program. As you already heard, I am taking you guys with me on my trip to Kyoto. We decided to take the bullet train because it is the fastest way to get to Kyoto. It is about 4.30 now and we should be arriving in Kyoto at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Going around this time was super amazing because we got to see the sunset as we were making our way into Kyoto. And boy wasn't it beautiful, I'm so happy we took a late train. And after having a nice conversation with the locals next to us, we finally made our way off the train and into Kyoto. What a quick ride that was. Upon first glance, there wasn't anything special. You know, it's just getting off the bullet train and making our way out of the station. Okay guys, we got off the Shinkansen. And now, we're getting on the subway. Here we are in Kyoto. Um, yeah, I, I have so much to show you guys. Me and Lucia, we have a lot planned for our weekend. And um, that's it for this vlog. All right, bye guys. Me and my friend are only here for a day and a half, but we have a lot planned in this short amount of time, and I think we'll get a chance to see everything. Since it's already kind of late, we thought we'd head to our Airbnb and check in before stopping to go get some dinner. The Kyoto station is really big, so we had a bit of a hard time trying to navigate because the signs aren't super clear like they are in Nagoya, but after asking around, we finally made it off the station where we were supposed to be. Since we decided to book this trip on literal impulse, we decided to stay at a Japanese guest house, which is nice for people who are only staying a short while because you get your own room, but you're sharing with other foreigners there. But the place was pretty beautiful and I like being able to stay in the traditional Japanese tatami mats. The place isn't super big, but I think it's just enough space since we're only here for one night. It had two tatami beds, it had an, its own bathroom, a TV, and a little tea kettle if we wanted food along with anything else we might need to ask for from our host. After dropping off our things, we were kind of hungry, so we decided to grab a snack at the convenience store really quick before making the journey to go grab some food. The place we ended up eating was actually a vegan restaurant. My friend is vegetarian, so this was great for her because she got to order anything she really wanted on the menu. There were actually a lot of foreigners here too, which was an interesting change of pace. I forgot the name of what this place was called, but I'll write it in the comments if you want to try out this place for yourself. I started off with a warm bamboo tea, and then for my meal, I had buckwheat ramen noodles. Kind of interesting, but they tasted really good. All of the music in Japan is so interesting, especially in restaurants and grocery stores. And the music in here really made me feel like I was in a movie. It was super cute. I love the feel of the restaurant. So I highly recommend checking this out, especially if you are vegan or vegetarian. And this place has tons of options for you. After leaving the restaurant, we stumbled upon this old vintage store, which was actually really cute. We decided to try on some of the old jackets here, and then after seeing the price tag, we quickly took them off. But they were really cute to wear. They were old Japanese-style bomber jackets, and I really liked them, even though they were way too expensive for us to buy. Now this little Kyoto shop was really interesting. These are very common in Japan where you can go into a store and there be no workers attended. The only thing there is a camera and pure trust that you will pay for the food that you pick. 
This little shop sold dumplings and basically you take them out of the fridge, you put your money in and then you can leave purely on trust that you pay for everything. I don't know if this would fly in America, but it was really cool to see. After the meal, we stopped in this little store across the street to get some drinks. And the place had so much pretty artwork in it and the staff were so nice. They were so excited to treat us. This is the traditional Japanese izakaya, which is also known as a Japanese bar. This is where lots of people come to drink and just be stress-free for the day. You can be actually loud in here, unlike in most restaurants, but you can get lots of food, lots of drinks, and it is a lot of fun. We ordered some dessert and we decided to pick a drink based off of what the staff recommended. And they spoke a little bit of English compared to the really hard Japanese menu that I definitely could not read, but everything tasted really good. I also saw this name of a drink and was like, oop, that looks a little sus. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> after staying until practically the bar closed, it was about time for us to leave. Kyoto was pretty quiet at night. There was a few people walking around, but we decided to do some exploring before making our way back to the hotel. We also stopped and bought another drink at a convenience store. I don't know if you know this, but you can actually walk around with alcohol in public in Japan. It's not legal in America, so I thought that was pretty cool. We didn't stay out for too much longer, and after all the alcohol finally hitting us, I think I was about ready to go to bed. Then right again at 9am, it was back up and moving. Ah, it's so nice to see Kyoto in the day versus at night. I love the beautiful morning sights. Before we get started, it is important that we get a nice breakfast because we have a lot of walking around to do. A common Japanese breakfast is usually bread and some eggs, I believe. Since I don't like eggs, I just walked over to the convenience store and grabbed a snack, but my friend had a nice lovely egg breakfast and I had chicken with two pancakes, which hey, is pretty good. Don't knock it till you try it. The breakfast place we chose was luckily right underneath the station, so all we had to do was head upstairs and wait for the next train to get to Kyoto Station. Our hotel is probably about five minutes away from where Kyoto Station actually is, but Kyoto Station is where all of the big temples are and where everybody will be for the day. Since we checked out of the hotel, we decided to put our luggage in a locker so then we'd have free range of being able to move around without carrying our suitcases. Lockers are located pretty much anywhere in Japan, so if you are traveling and know you can't bring your luggage with you, just find a locker and I'm sure you can fit your stuff in there. The first stop of the day is Kinkakuji Temple. Hopefully I'm not botching the name too much, but it is one of the most famous temples in Japan, and that is where everyone is going today because the fall leaves are bright and red today. After getting off the bus, we have arrived. Wow, look at the sights. Now before you get to the temple, there are tons of shops and tons of things to see before you actually get to the top where the shrine actually is. And look, there it is! That's the temple of the picture I have on my bedroom wall. It's so weird seeing it actually in person. Honestly, my camera can't do it justice, guys. This place is beautiful. The fall leaves are so bright and so beautiful. It honestly feels like you're in a different world. If you're looking for a temple to visit, I highly recommend to see this one first because the bright orange and the beautiful leaves that contrast with it is worth every single bus and train trip imaginable. <laughs> if you pay 500 yen, this lets you go into this little back part here where we're able to look at all the leaves and it shows you more of the inside of what the shrines look like. In American currency, it's about $4, so highly recommend, you might as well do it. You already made it all the way here. When you actually get into the area, you'll see a lot of people praying, there's a lot of sage lit, and there's lots of stations where you can buy these charms. These charms are really common in Japan, a lot of people have them for different reasons, and they say different things like good health, if you need to find a relationship, for healthy pregnancy, maybe good driving, anything that you might need, I highly recommend maybe buying a little charm for safe travels on the way back home. And here's a look at the famous temple and the beautiful view behind it. After the long walk up the temple, you can finally head down, but before going down, you get to walk through this beautiful nature path where you can just look at the leaves and a few other sights before you actually make your way back to the start. There's also these cute Japanese style restaurants where you can sit and eat with friends. They look a little expensive and since I live here, I don't think I need to stop at one of these places. 
but instead we stopped for some ice cream since Kyoto is mostly known for their matcha ice cream, so of course we had to try it. And it was delicious! Next up we went to Toji Temple since it was about 5 minutes from where we just left from. There's a famous photo that my friend wanted to recreate that most people know Toji Temple from. There are so many temples in Kyoto, you can probably find one around every corner. The real challenge is not being able to find one. So of course here it is, we found it, it was pretty easy, we decided to recreate the photo, and next up we already had plans for our next destination. Next up I really wanted to see the bamboo forest, but it's about an hour away from the Kyoto station, so we have to get back on the train and head over to Arashiyama Bamboo Grove. I don't think the commute is actually an hour, but since we came on such a busy day, with all the traffic, I think it was about an hour until we actually arrived. And we did come on a very busy day. There were so, so, so many people, but I guess this is the best time to come because those beautiful leaves are something you do not want to miss. Arashiyama is another small traditional town in Kyoto. It's very cute because you can take a little train that will take you around, but it was sold out today because it was so busy, but there's tons of other stuff that you can do in the area. Like, we decided to stop at a kimono shop, and I got to buy my first ever kimono! Isn't it so cute? I picked out that yellow one, and I love it! Before stopping at the temple, we noticed we were near the Kyoto Bridge, so we thought we'd stop by and take a little photo near it. But as you can see, there are tons and tons of people. It was super congested. But the bridge was very beautiful to see. And, but of course, I noticed the Kyoto Rilakkuma shop, so of course we couldn't leave without me stopping in there and buying a million things that I did not need. <laughs> but this one had so many cute Rilakkuma things, but they were Kyoto themed. Like, come on, I had to stop. Like, look at the stuff. It's so cute. But after that, we finally made it to the bamboo forest because it wasn't very far from the cute little Rilakkuma store. This place felt like we walked right out of a movie. It was amazing to see. It almost felt like you were trapped in there and you were going to be stuck wandering around through bamboo for hours and hours. But it was everything but stressful. It was beautiful to see bamboo grow this tall. I've actually never seen bamboo in real life up until now. And let me tell you, it was a sight to see. Now if you go to this bamboo forest, you're going to actually stumble upon a few temples, but one being a garden, and it almost feels like a secret garden because it's kind of hidden. It costs 500 yen to go in, so we figured, sure, we made it all this way. <laughs> this wasn't exactly planned on our list of things to do, but wow, was it a lucky treat. The garden was gorgeous. Maybe I'm just a nature freak, but this was probably the highlight of my trip. I loved seeing how bright orange the trees were. It's probably one of my favorite things to see is just trees, nature, anything in that realm. Here's how my kimono looked under the beautiful trees. I definitely got some cute photos in this kimono and it was beautiful. It matched the scenery perfect. We've been seeing people in kimonos all day and now I feel like I fit right in. I didn't realize how hard it was to walk uphill in a kimono, but now I realize why these people were standing so close to the edge trying to hike up their kimonos because I was doing the same thing. There were lots of uphills and downhills, but it was definitely a beautiful sight to see so many green trees, so many pretty leaves, and I really like the garden. I highly recommend you come check this little place out. And lastly, before we left the garden, it was so nice to see this ginormous pond right near, of course, a temple. Where would we be if we did not see a temple in Kyoto? If you don't get a chance to come here in the fall, come here in the spring because I know that there are tons of flowers and like these willow trees that aren't bloomed right now, I'm sure this place looks even more gorgeous in the springtime. After buying a few charms at the little temple just to bring home for a souvenir, we continued walking through the bamboo forest until we reached the end. Once you get to the end, there's not really too much to see, so we figured it's about time we head back to Kyoto Station to see if we can find something to eat. Hey guys, so we've had a long day and we got to see lots of sights. I'm sure I've showed you many sights in this video so far, but so far, really liking Kyoto. I hope you guys have liked it too. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. Overall, I think a good day and a half is 
enough to see a good amount. Maybe not everything, but most of it's temples. So if you have a favorite temple you want to see, definitely this is the area to see it. Um, but yeah, other than that, we saw the bamboo forest, we looked at the bridge, a bunch of other stuff, and yeah, hopefully everything else will be pretty good. Either way, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later, and uh, yeah, bye! The sun was beginning to set, so we made our way back to Kyoto Station so we can go find some dinner. Once we arrive back, Kyoto at night is just as lively as it was during the day, with tons and tons of people out, ready to enjoy the nightlife. Since we have to start heading home soon, we decided to have a quick bite to eat at the sushi restaurant, and you can't go wrong with sushi that comes out on a rotary. Restaurants like this are common everywhere in Japan. You always know how much you're going to spend because of the color of your plate. You order on a little tablet, and it tells you how much the cost of each sushi is. You press the button, and then it comes to you on a little rotary line. The food was pretty good, but we wanted to look at a few more sites before heading home. The area we're walking around is called Ponte Cho. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but it's known because it has a very lively atmosphere in the night and in the day. We thought we'd stop at one more temple before leaving, and this is called Yasaka Shrine. It's one of the very few temples in Kyoto that illuminates at nighttime. In this area, there were a lot of people grabbing food and hanging out by all the lanterns. It does look really cool, doesn't it? And if you follow the path, you will stumble upon a cute little stage where they are doing Japanese performances here. I honestly couldn't tell you what it's about, but it was really cute to watch. After watching the show, there wasn't really too much left for us to do. By this point, I want to say it was about 8.30, and we planned on staying till about 10, but we actually pretty much finished what we wanted to do, so we started to head our way back to the train station. We decided to take a local bus back to the station, and that led us right to where we could get right back on the bullet train and head straight home. But I hope you guys liked today's vlog. I hope you get a chance to visit Kyoto for yourselves. Let me know what you thought about this video. Please give it a like, a comment, and a subscribe, please. And let me know if you've ever been to Kyoto or if you'd want to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.